Buenos días a todos. Eh, me conocen como Jack por ahí. Eh, yo soy la persona que administra el servidor de Discord de PRGD. Eh, soy parte también de la asociación que Jonathan acaba de hablar de PRGD. Siempre estamos aquí para ayudarlos y ver con todo lo posible en Game Development. Este, quisiera hacerles hoy una presentación más de lo que es Project Management, eh, similar también a lo que es Scope Management. Este, bueno, empecemos. The 500 Golden Idea. Now, everyone has that wonderful idea that's going to give them hundreds of dollars, millions of marketing revenue, everything that everyone always wished for. It's the next Flappy Bird, it's the next Super Mario, it's the next anything. Now, because we constantly have these ideas, it gets a little overwhelming. Now, the way that we can deal with it, there's several ways. One of the, the first step that you should do is you shouldn't. <laughs> Now, to explain a little bit as to why, I'm not saying don't work on your ideas. I'm not saying don't try your hardest to get everything that's inside your head out into a game and published. I'm saying find the right time to do so. Find the right time to say, This is the perfect project for today to finish for this next year, for the next year after that. It's managing how you handle your products. Managing how you handle your products. Yeah, well, technically, yes. So we have to take a look at all the projects that we've done in the past. And if there's any unfinished projects, we should probably focus on those first, unless we know for certain that they're going to end it nowhere, which is more than often to say. Um, take, for example, Blizzard. Blizzard cancels, on the yearly basis, hundreds of projects that they've had. Cancels straight up titles we've never even heard of. Overwatch 2 used to be a huge thing back in the day when Overwatch 1 came out, but they canceled it and they restarted it again. They did the same with World of Warcraft. There was going to be a World of Warcraft 2, Warcraft 4. Most of those projects never see the light of day. Why? Because they know how to manage their projects. They do testing, they do paper pro they do uh, paper prototypes, they do uh, game designs, and you can find these online. And they're wonderful, but they lead nowhere because they knew that that project wasn't going to be successful. So what they did is they completely canceled out, burned that project, and started a new one. That's okay. Big companies do it, little companies can do it too, and even an individual can do it. We're talking people like the man who made papers, please who recently, last year in the GDC, earned several awards for his uh, game called The Return of Oberyn. And I do mean several. He beat out multiple AAA companies. One single person made one game that beat out several AAA companies. We're talking Spider-Man, we're talking Red Dead Redemption, we're talking God of War. This person made a game so good that it beat every single title. That's because this person who works on their project has a very set discipline on how he works on his things. Now, I'm kind of assuming here, but he does have a way of working on his projects that he focuses solely on that one project. And he doesn't stop until it's finished. And once it's finished, he finishes it again, just to make sure that he got it right the first time. What I want people to understand is that when you're working through these projects, when you're working through all of these concepts that you have in your head, you have to think about a lot of variables. We have to think about Is it playable? Write down a paper play test. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a wonderful way of testing out your project. Does it work on paper? Yes. Then put it into a playable prototype online, 3D. Take it out to your friends. Let's see if it works there. You have to consider how much time you spent on it. Because that's unpaid time that you're working on this project, for the most part. If this isn't part of a company, if it's a solo project, it's definitely unpaid time. And you have to value yourself to the point where it's worth spending that time on that project. Another thing that you have to also consider is how you work on the DDD. Now, what a DDD is, is a game design document. This document you use so that you can further create the development of the project without necessarily stepping into it. It helps you analyze what steps are needed to complete said project. These game design documents help you out a lot because when you get stuck, you read it out, you're like, okay, I need to do this function, and I need to do that little character there, and I need to keep it to this set, And that's what helps you maintain a workflow. 
When you don't have a workflow, it becomes increasingly hard to finish your project. And it's easier to get sidetracked. Way easier enough that you'd have 500 or so projects. One of the tips that I can tell you to manage those better is maintain a strict FIFO structure. First in, first out. The first idea that comes into your head, make that idea. Try it out. Prototype it. Develop it. If it doesn't work, cancel it out straight out. Don't put it in the back burner. Cancel it straight out and work on the next one. If you're certain that it's not going to work, make sure you try it out, give it to friends, give it to family. If they don't like the game, then there's something that you can take, criticism. Take that criticism in, develop your game further, see if it works. If it doesn't, then you know it's not a good idea. And that golden idea gets downgraded to a silver idea. The more you work on it, it goes into bronze. Or maybe it's such a great idea, it stays golden for a few years. And you keep working on it. You write down those ideas. You want to make sure that every time you take a step where you're kind of tired of working on that one project, don't move it to the side and start another. Because then you'll just end up back in the cycle. You won't be in the first in, first out service. You'd just be straight up again in that endless cycle of, oh, another idea, oh, another idea. Oh, I like that idea. And then all of a sudden, you're in debt. <laughs> so <clears throat> take your time, make those DVDs, make those paper tests, try out your prototypes, see if you like them, and see if they're worth scaling. And that way, when you get into the next golden idea that you've had, you're able to see if it's actually worth working on. Because by then, the joy and hype of, oh my god, I have this wonderful idea that's going to be like a mashup between um, Dying Light and uh, Rainbow Six Siege. All of a sudden, it's like, huh, maybe it won't quite work. Because you've had time to think about it. You've had time to analyze it because you've been so busy with your other project that now when you come back to this new one, now you have the time to breathe and see, okay, this isn't going to work. And you move on to the next one and the next one. And by then, by the time that you finish overanalyzing all these little fun little details about your project, you'll have released two, five, 20 projects before you know it. Because you've learned how to manage yourself and manage your ideas and manage how to work on those ideas. It is crucial to do so. So in conclusion, we always want to keep a very strong base for new projects. By doing so, we're able to focus solely on that project and anything regarding it, including the game design documents, including the, the animations, the 3D, everything that's regarding it. And if we're stuck, we can always keep working on it some other time. But just because you have multiple ideas doesn't mean you're not supposed to work on them. Well, yes, that is what I wrote. <laughs> it's that you have to know how to manage those ideas. Because everyone has ideas. Everyone. You walk around down the street, someone said, you tell them you're a programmer, suddenly it's like, oh, can you make this project for me? I've had this wonderful idea that's going to make millions. Everyone. I see you laughing. <laughs> so always try and finish those projects that you have in your head. Because the reward that comes from finishing that project is insurmountable. You'll be able to do so much with the fact that you now have a project out. Not only can you use it to find a better job or possibly get a sponsor or investor or anything else, you can use it to be like, here, this is what I'm capable of. This is what I was able to do a year ago. This is what I'm able to do in the now. And also, when you have that many projects under you, that means more revenue. That unpaid time that you spent on all those projects that are now released, because we're looking for products to be released, now that time becomes more valuable for you. Even if it's just a penny a day, you're still getting paid for that time. And finally, when you keep through this structure of first in, first out, and you work on all your projects that you're supposed to, you know, we always get a little sidetracked, you feel more valued for your time. That time management that you're capable of doing now because you're able to see when an idea might be just good but not right at the moment. And that's more or less the conclusion. Thank you. If there's any questions, I'm available now or later. <laughs> any questions? Uh, do you have any specific program or software that you like to use to help you organize various projects? So depending on the type of uh, idea that I have, if it's already fleshed out, let's say I've had a dream of 
this amazing product that I've had all of the concepts get that, uh, sketched out and everything. I would do something like Trello or like Hack and Plan to then create the basis of it and see where it can go from there. If I'm just writing down an idea that I had, like monkeys versus Godzilla, you know, pretty obvious one. <laughs> if that pops into my head, I'll write it down on a paper or on a notebook or inside a laptop and keep it there under a list of ideas that I've already had. That way I can keep a track of what I've done or what I've thought about, and then I can revisit it later on and be like, okay, well this idea seemed good in the moment, but is it actually good? Or was it just because I woke up after that really crazy dream? Yeah. You know? <coughs> Anything else? <coughs> uh, what kind of, what kind of uh, things do you often think about when it comes to deciding, is this project viable? Is this worth going through? Do you consider time it might take, uh, market trends that are recent? Anything else? So when you're looking at market trends, if you're into it for the marketing research, then that's great. The problem with doing marketing research is you have to also keep in mind how long that project's gonna take. So let's say you have an idea of little toy soldiers fighting everywhere. Awesome, that's great. How long is it gonna make you, uh, take you to make that project? Let's say it's six months. How's the market gonna look in six months? Don't worry about the now, because now Toy Story's on the rage, Kingdom Hearts released their little Toy Story world and everything, everything's going wild about little toy soldiers. But in six months, it's, a, it's about the clown it, or scary movies, or stuff like that. And suddenly, your game is no longer relevant. Your idea is no longer relevant. That doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It just means that by six months from now, it might not be viable to release it at that time. Now, you could wait for a better opportunity. For example, me and myself, I'm working on a project called 1,000 Paper Cuts. This has been longstanding, and I will continue working on it. But I'm still waiting for the right time to be like, hey, this is my project. Because the market still isn't there for what I need it to be. That just depends on exactly how you want to focus on your ideas. This doesn't mean, again, that your idea is bad. It just means that you have to actually analyze where you're going to release it, if you're, not, if you're doing it for more of a marketing research. Anything else? Apart from uh, you know, the typical notebook, paper, and pen, uh, what are other essential ingredients you use for your ideas in this in catalog just in case you might need to use them in the future? So to keep your ideas cataloged, there's different ways. Um, like I said, I use Trello as one of the softwares. Um, Trello, if you have a personal account, it lets you make un an unlimited amount of boards. So every time I have an idea, I write down the name of the idea or the game or the name or whatever I want to have. And then I start categorizing what I want from it. These are the mechanics, these are the uh, art designs, these are the references of said mechanics. And then I go on to either Google Documents or my computer or whatever. And I start writing down lore or possibly other stuff related like the game design document or paper testing. Now paper testing is really good for that because paper testing allows you to see the workflow of your game to the point where you can say, okay, it's kind of viable, it seems like a fun idea, let's test it out on an actual prototype. That's another way of managing that type of information. Workflow systems are also really good for that, or brain maps. Anything else? All right, thank you very much.